Welcome back to The Artist Wait. This is episode 13. Wow. I went to the dentist today. No cavities. I have some bad news and good news. The bad news is that I wasn't cast in the Mary's Wedding show. That's okay. Because the good news is I'm not taking it personally. That's that's the silver lining here. <laughs> no, but really, that that's a great thing for me. Because really, when it comes down to it, if you put yourself out there and if you show them who you are, that's all you can do. And the director sent me an email. He was really complimentary and said he hoped to work with me in the future. So I, you know, it was just, it didn't work out for this show. Other exciting news is that I've started rehearsals now for Midsummer Night's Dream. Yeah, so last night was our first rehearsal. It's gonna be fun. It's really weird though because this is the first show I've done in a long time where I haven't already known pretty much everybody in the cast. I only knew the director coming into this show and it's weird because I can feel like these old habits coming back, things that I was hoping I had grown out of. Being around all those new people I could feel that I was shrinking into myself, not claiming my power and I really heard it in my voice. I need to shave. My voice was a lot higher. I know I have somewhat of a higher voice but I wasn't like I'm not owning it, and all day I've been really aware of how am I breathing. Ugh, I hold my stomach so much. Breathing so I can come into my full power and own the part and be my authentic self in rehearsal. That's what's gonna happen. All those little anxieties aside, I'm so excited to be working on a production, and on this production particularly. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, so I'll keep you updated on what's going on. There is a blog to go along with like the rehearsal process. I'm going to put that uh, right here. Ta-da! <laughs> to let you in on what, as a cast, we're gonna be talking about. Particularly for me, since I'm playing Lysander. Sorry, since I'm playing Lysander. I learned that last night. I thought it was Lysander, but it's Lysander. I'm saying my name wrong all these years. What's the difference between Demetrius and Lysander? Lysander has this great speech that says, we're exactly the same. Why are you choosing Demetrius over me when I love your daughter, Hermia, and she loves me? So I gotta think about what it is that is different when things seem the same. Right now, I'm thinking that it kind of has something to do with the outward appearance. How Demetrius seems to Aegeus, and how Lysander seems. Lysander is much more of, I think, a poet. Demetrius is much more boisterous. Like, when they're watching the Mechanicals in Act 5, Demetrius always has something to say. Lysander kind of comments every now and then, but it's, it's always after Demetrius has already started talking about things. I think Aegeus' preference for Demetrius has something to do with how Demetrius appears like he's more capable when Lysander lays it out and says, we're equals. I think, honestly, Lysander thinks he's more capable. He has more of the capacities. Maybe that's just because there's times in my life that I feel like I've had more of the capacities than someone who's louder than I am. I think that's where I'm gonna go with that. Anyway, that's that. Thanks for tuning in to The Artist's Weight. I can do things with my shoulders. Make sure you're reading Bright Beach Memoirs by Neil Simon, because we're gonna have a talk about Neil Simon. Talk about everything that Simon says. Bye. I mean, bye. <laughs>